I brought Michu to BCS and came top four. And let's talk about why I brought this deck and didn't bring Doji, didn't bring Leonon, didn't bring Jet, didn't bring these other 500 amazing decks. Why did I bring Michu? So Michu is, yeah, very nice. It's a, it's like Leonon Light. Um, I love the deck. I think I've been playing the deck for a while. And, you know, I decided to bring it and it came forth, right? Had top 16 cut, went through a plethora of decks. And I just felt like this deck was it um, and, you know, showed results. So here we are, right? So just going to go through, I guess, my build. Uh, but more so, I think the most important thing about this video is why I brought the deck, right? But anyways, let's go through the deck itself. Um, it shouldn't be too much different from every other Mewtwo deck out there anyways. Um, but yeah, let's get into it anyways. So the ride line is obviously the Mewtwo ride line. Uh, if you don't have the whole alive one, you can just use the base one. Uh, so essentially, starter to starter, you can use um, the Mewtwo starter. Uh, but I, I don't think it really matters, right? Oh yeah, it actually does. So you have to, ha you have to use the uh, Mewtwo starter, but this one counts, right? So the grade one, essentially when you ride, you essentially get the grade one um, set order and place it straight into the order zone. Very important. You only play one copy of this. So pretty much if you see this in the mulligan uh, or in your hand, you mulligan it back straight up. So you essentially set that and that allows you to set multiple orders regardless of grade from your hand into your order zone. And then each, each of your orders that you set allows you to draw one. The grade two, uh, the grade two meets you pretty much when it rides, you look at the top five cards of your deck for uh, either Nokono or a Cannonball and then add it to your hand. Pretty self-explanatory. The grade three meets you. This is really important. This is so important that you play this specific meet you and not the whole alive one. Purely because in this meta, there is Blankmire. Blankmire removes um, abilities. And because the whole alive one gives the name via the ability, then Imagra doesn't work right so make sure you play this Mewtwo it is very very important do not play the Hololive one I uh, emphasize that um, because of Blank Mai in this current format so what does this uh, grade 3 Mewtwo do it's pretty much Leonorn so essentially act count us one if you have the grade one order into in your order zone you can count us one draw one core card from your hand or discard it right you're, you're always pretty much calling one there's no reason why you would discard it um, but yeah, maybe if like you can discard like a cannonball or something, but it's very rarely you ever discard. The second effect, uh, sometimes you use this, uh, but most of you, most of the time your orders changes your cannonball. So cannonball, order Vanguard Circle. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, you can stop us two, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it, and this unit gains plus five until the end of battle. Uh, this cannonball effect gets uh, replaced, well, the effect gets replaced by your grade three order, but we'll go through that in just a sec. Um, so the start of the show is pretty much four of these two, or uh, four of these new Michu, so Glistening Mood Michu, are uh, pretty much a wall of text. So in, uh, I guess, Too Long Don't Read or TLDR, uh, essentially when you ride it over the this specific Michu, uh, you search your deck for a Cannonball, uh, sorry, you search your deck or your drop for a Cannonball or Nokono and add it to your hand. Um, and if you, uh, if you rode, then activate Persona Ride. Uh, if you use the Imagra clone, which I'll talk to, talk about in just a sec, uh, to ride this, you obviously don't uh, Persona Ride if you rode this straight up from grade three, right? Second effect, act, you bind this Michu. Very important. You bind this Michu, you retire one of your opponent's rear guards and your cannonball ability is reduced by Soul Blast 2. Uh, and then at the end of turn, you ride this Michu back as resting. The third skill, Cannonball, when this unit attacks, you can stop us to choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. And this unit gains plus 10. But then again, you know, as I explained before, the cannonball effect gets replaced by your orders most of the time. But yeah, good to know anyways. Sometimes, you know, it randomly comes up. It did come up for a few games of mine because I expended my orders, didn't have, I guess, the grade three order, but I had the grade two order and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You kind of have to make do with what you have, right? With the grade twos, so we play uh, four of this new Nokono. It's pretty busted. So essentially, if your cannonball was put from the order zone into drop zone, which is pretty much every turn from grade three onwards, uh, this unit gains plus 10. The second ability, act, once per turn, glitter Michu. So as long as you have Michu, uh, it's glitter. Uh, if your Vanguard is grade three or greater, you can count plus one, so plus one. And this unit gets 
Uh, when this unit attacks, if you have not drove check on rear guard yet, this performs a drive check, right? Uh, the beauty of this deck is that um, you essentially get four checks, two on your vanguard, one from this, one from the gray one Nokno, and the gray one Nokno does not count as a rear guard because it swaps with your vanguard, right? Uh, so four, four times, uh, four checks, three instances of pressure from drive checks is just really, really strong. So that is the gray two um, Nokno. Then we also play Milagros. So um, this card is pretty good. The first effect is the same as Nokno. So pretty much if a cannonball is put from uh, your, sorry, the second effect, when your cannonball is put from your order zone to your drop zone, this turn, this gains plus 10. The best thing about this card is the first ability when this is placed on Regard, if you have a Michu in its card name, or Vanguard with Michu, uh, you can put a card from your hand into soul any card. Then you choose a cannonball from your drop, put it into your hand. If your damage zone has three or more face down cards, you can charge one if you haven't this turn. So pretty much you have to sequence it well so that you maximize the use of the counter charge for this card. Um, and then, you know, pretty much this is your uh, extra copies of cannonball when you use them during your turns, right? So sometimes you use the cannonball first, you use this, grab the cannonball back, set it with your uh, Grey One Order, etc, etc. Sometimes um, you kind of have, have to expend this so that you grab your Grey Two Order um, to make certain plays, and I'll explain that later in the video. So that's Milagross. Uh, I guess we'll touch base on the orders before we go into the Grade One. So the Grade One Order, all set up. It's your main order that you get from the ride line. You only play one because you're only ever going to get it from your ride line. So act order zone, if you have a Michu Vanguard, you can rest this card, Soul Charge 1, choose a Cannonball from your hand and put it into your order zone. Uh, this is not grade restricted, so you can put any Cannonball from your hand into order zone at any grade. And then pretty much uh, speaking about Cannonballs, right? We play uh, three of the grade twos. So essentially you can play this with Cannonballs 1 or essentially if you set it from the grade one, it has an auto ability when this when this card is put into the auto zone you draw one so essentially when you set it from the grade one skill uh you immediately just uh set this order or set the grade three order they both have the same effect and you draw one so you essentially replace the card that you set uh which is this card right the second ability act auto zone if you have a grade three or greater meets you vanguard you can put this card from auto zone to drop uh, choose one of your units, gains plus 10. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards until the end of your opponent's next turn. That unit cannot intercept, nor can it stand during your opponent's stand phase. Uh, in a match with Blangmire, this is really good because you just stun their Vade Rocks, uh, stun their whatever the grade 2 that gets crit, and your opponent essentially has to replenish their board by committing hand, right? Uh, also turns off a bunch of really good intercepts like uh, in Polio's um, Grade 2, uh, Eva's as well, uh, there's just many ways you can just turn off intercepts and it just makes it even harder for your opponent to guard. So that's the Grade 2 order. And then probably the most important order, which is Flower Cannonball, the Grade 3. Uh, same effect as the Grade 2, you can play this by Canvas 1 or if it's set by the Grade 1, uh, the order ability pops off. When this card is put into your order zone, you can draw 1. The second effect from the order zone, if you have a grade three or greater Michu Vanguard, you can put this card from your order zone to the drop zone and then change all of your Vanguard's cannonball abilities to auto Vanguard circle when this unit attacks. So plus two, choose three of your units and the gains plus 10 until the end of the turn. So as I mentioned before, if you're using this or this, uh, the cannonball skill, you essentially replace the cannonball skill with this. Uh, the trade-off is, is that if you ride Glistening Mu Michu, then its buying skill retires, which is something that you don't miss, right? Uh, by exchanging the effect from this order. So that's that. Um, and as you can see, you know, there's a lot of power, a lot of plus 10, plus 10s, you know, grade two plus 10, this plus 10, this plus 10, this plus 10. So as you can see, um, it's a very, you know, aggressive deck, yeah? Uh, going to the grade ones, so we play uh, three one, Pretty self-explanatory. Pretty much every deck plays three PGs, one second two, unless you're Shuju Doji. Um, second two is always good. You know, sometimes you can just bypass like Luard or something like that. Uh, four of Referica. So it's pretty much the Imagra clone. If you guys have played Eva, uh, it kind of does the same thing. 
has two skills when it's placed on rear guard if you have the grade one order in your auto zone which is always uh, you can energy blast three look at the top seven for a cannonball and add it to your hand uh, the amount of times i've missed with this card is actually ridiculous um but sometimes you just need to do it uh, you don't use eb for anything else the only other thing you use eb for is the energy generator to energy blast seven draw one sometimes you just abuse this card and you just get three plus ones right um the second effect act rear guard circle if you have a grade three or Grade, uh, sorry, if you have a grade 3 Vanguard with Michu in its card name, you can put this into Soul, search for this Michu, the Glistening Mood, and then ride it, shuffle your deck. If your Vanguard was placed this turn, or you Persona Road this turn, you cannot activate Persona Ride. Makes sense, right? So you can't just ride up to grade 3, immediately get Persona Ride, this deck would be busted. Yeah? Um, the good thing about this is that, like, you know, it's, it's essentially got 8 Persona Rides, kind of. Um, or eight cards that allow you to Persona Ride. You don't have to always have your Grade 3 in your hand to Persona Ride. Uh, you can just chuck this. If it's on Rear Guard still, you can just use the skill um, and then get Persona Ride like, on the following turn, right? So that's Referica. Uh, then we play three of the Grade 1 Nokno. Uh, so this particular art um, is the whole life art for Suisei. Uh, it has the ability to change the name to Nokno. Uh, auto from drop when this when a card is put into your order zone this is really important when a card is put into your order zone if you do not have a unit with nokno you can stop us one call this behind your vanguard right so the back row center rear guard this is important because if you ditch this for your first ride to grade one you you put the all set up in your auto zone you immediately fuck this by soul busting your starter and you call this behind your vanguard right really important especially if you want to push for damage which is what this deck opts to do um or wants to do like it's just a free call right like so good uh if your opponent retires it you can just call it back happy days yeah so that is nokno the second effect uh glitter michu uh which is essentially always uh auto back row rear guard center column at the end of battle that your vanguard attacked if your opponent's vanguard is grade three or greater so you can't do this going first on turn three, you can cover us one, discard a card from your hand, stand this unit, and swap it with your Vanguard, right? So pretty much anything that is put on this card is carried over. So triggers that are put on this card, effects that are put in this card, power that's put on this card uh, stays. So pretty much you swap it with your Vanguard, and then you essentially get another attack, right? Another Vanguard attack. Um, best thing about this, again, like I mentioned before, so you have two checks here, one check here, and one check on your Nokno, -no, and that's like three times your opponent has to you know guard awkwardly in anticipation of a crit yeah so that's knock no and then we also play four yuika uh so i was contemplating on swapping one of the yuikas for a twin cast but i felt that you know twin cast is not winning me the game i think early early game aggression is winning me the game um so you know i can sometimes just Call Yuika, call like a trigger in front of it. It's like 13, just bash my opponent, soul boss one and bounce the trigger back. Um, I think that's really, really valuable. Or like, even if it's like a PG, it's like 14, just attack, bounce it back. Um, and I think that's way more valuable than having a twin cast that doesn't really work in the early game. Um, and I think this deck like draws a lot, like four drive checks a turn, um, being able to filter out using your orders to just draw. Like, I think this deck has a lot of um, you know, quality, the quality of your hand is really good. So I don't feel like I ever need a twin cast at all. Uh, so playing the full Yuika is good to push for my game plan, right? Which is to push my opponents up to high damage as early as possible. Um, everyone knows Yuika, so pretty much, um, when another unit is placed in the same column as this unit, if your opponent's Vanguard is grade three or greater, this unit gains plus five, uh, and it retains it. So if the unit in front gets removed it still gains the 5k or keeps the 5k the second effect at the end of battle that this boosted a rear guard you can solve us one and, and bounce the uh boosted unit back to your hand so again like i said you can just like pop triggers pop pgs in the front row and then you know bounce them back early aggression right with with no um uh what you what you call it like no no compromise essentially so Going to triggers, uh, it's pretty simple. So four heals, I didn't play any fancy heals. Uh, the meta doesn't really call for it. And I think being able to just guard 15 in the early game is just super valuable, especially if I want to like get myself at damage, especially against like stuff like Blangmire. Um, going into the divi their divine turn is 
pretty much a dense sentence if you get past two or three damage. Um, so being able to go out early with a 15k is just really valuable. Then we play uh, eight crits. Uh, I decided to play eight vanilla crits. The intersoul crit does not matter in this deck. This deck has insane amounts of soul. Uh, you will never lose soul. Um, and sometimes, you know, you just you just drop like a 5k in front of a Yuika. It's like 13, your opponent, you, you know, you're hitting a 13k Vanguard. Um, and in the early game, it's really good too, because if you're attacking 13 into your opponent's 8k, that's a 10k guard, really, really valuable. And you can't do that with a 4k base, right? The last couple of triggers. So I play three of the effect fronts. Um, fronts are really strong in this deck. Pretty much you're pumping your Milagros, your Noknos um, into insane amounts of power. Already they're like pretty much base 30, right? Uh, base 40 on Persona Ride because you're ditching one cannonball. You use the flower cannonball to give it 10. Itself is 10, so 30 in a Persona Ride 40. Uh, you hit a front, it's 50, right? Which is ridiculous numbers. Um, so fronts are always good in this deck. I think, yeah, that this this deck draws a lot as well. So if you're going through draws, you're going to deck out. You're also soul charged with your uh, grade one order. So you're going to deck out, right? Uh, a lot of things draw in this deck. So, you know, your orders, your soul charging here, your drive checking for every turn. Uh, if you check a front, your opponent's like more than dead, really. And then the last card is the blue OT. So I was contemplating on whether I should play red I think blue helped me uh, get to that next turn so that I can kill. Um, I never felt I was too short of killing. I was either Omega dead or insanely winning. And for, for the most part, I was insanely winning pretty much every game, right? Um, so blue OT just made it more like a security barrier so that I can get whatever I needed to for the next turn, just so that I can get over the hump and win on the next turn. So yeah, that's the blue OT. So I guess the big hot question is why did I bring this deck and why did I not bring like Leonorn? Why did I not bring Shoyudoji? Why didn't I bring Chrono Jet? Like there's just so many other decks that I could have brought. Why did I bring Michu, right? So the problem in this format is Doji, right? Shoyudoji is obviously the, the target, right? You have to beat Shoyudoji or else you're not winning. Uh, funnily enough, I only played one in Swiss, which was pretty crazy. Um, but the one that I did beat, right? All I did was just smack face and he just couldn't guard at all. Like I got through his turn completely fine. It was just like a normal game, went through his turn completely fine. One percent of right, happy days. But like he just couldn't guard, right? And I think that's the best thing about this deck in comparison to Leonorn, right? This deck explodes on turn three. And on turn three, let's just say you're going first. It's only three attacks, no worries, but it's two columns with drive check. And I think being being able to apply pressure on two columns instead of one, where Leonorn is just the center column, Michu is the center column and the side column, just make it, makes it really awkward for your opponent to guard, right? Also, in the early game, this deck actually makes ridiculous numbers, right? So like, if you're going first, you drop like, uh, two no like two double no no or like no no milagros and then you have like your grade two vanguard with the grade one no no behind and then you have a yuika it's like 10 18 18 which is pretty much better numbers than leonorn because leonorn goes like 10 15 23 whereas you know michu has two unguardable um columns whereas leonorn has one right um more so if you check like a front, your opponent is just dead in the early game. They just immediately take three damage and they literally can't do anything about it. Uh, 18k column, if there's an 18k on the rear guard, you check a crit, that's 28, your opponent is just Omega dead, right? And the best thing about this deck is that when you get to grade three, all of your numbers become PGable numbers, right? Uh, it gets out of control to the point that your opponent has to PG or they're taking it, right? So if you think about it, if your Nokono is like 20k base, right, plus 10 from the flower cannibal, that's 30, right? Plus an 8k behind like a Yuika, that's 38. 38 on turn three against a 10k Vanguard, that is 30k shield. That's 215. You hit a front, you hit any triggers, it's over, right? Your opponent's just dead, right? If, for example, you set flower cannonball, the grade two, and then you pump the 10k to rearguard, 
Like that's 40k shield. Like your opponent's not guarding that, right? You pretty much push your opponent to like four to five damage straight up on grade three. And there's just no way, no room to recover because they can't just stabilize, right? And that is the weakness to Shoujuuji. Shoujuuji, like they need time to build up, right? The hand quality is not always great. It's like, you know, a lot of combo pieces. Sometimes, yeah, you know, you, is that sword into PG? Is that sword into PG? Like, that's fine, right? Um, but they need to PG the rear guards to be able to survive, right? But they can't do that every turn, yeah? Uh, they can, you know, put Kagechika, put the PG into Soul, bind it, and, you know, bind to, uh, suck in two rear guards to PG, like, sure, right? But they can't PG forever. And that is the beauty of this deck. This deck hits like a truck and big shout out to my friend taunt uh he absolutely destroyed me with this deck when it came out in jp and we call it the gorilla deck because it really is the gorilla deck right like it hits like a truck uh it it li you literally go ape and you just win right um funnily enough there was a game where i won on turn three and my opponent literally couldn't do anything right uh, put in pressure early game on grade two and yeah got to grade three couldn't guard my three attacks and just died so i think the reason another reason why i brought this deck was when i was testing leonorn leonorn's great leonorn's great when you get to the second vivace the first one feels a little bit underwhelming you know because the grade three turn is like three attacks but like there's no pressure right it's just the middle column if you check a bunch of crits then great um and even in the early game it's like 10 15 23 with like maybe like the the grade 2 searcher as well as lust luster impact then it's like you know big numbers 30k maybe uh but that's just like take one whatever right but then the other two are guardable whereas this deck it's not all guardable right you, you have to take the middle if i check a crit if i check a trigger on, i put it on rear guard then it just suddenly becomes not guardable right Especially, like, I have to keep my cards in hand to be able to combo next turn. And, yeah, it's just really, really hard to achieve, right? And I think that's also another thing. Like, this deck needs very minimal stuff to pop off, right? You don't always have to use your grade 3 cannonball. Uh, you set them, like, a bunch early, right? You only ever use one per turn. Uh, your grade 2s, you don't usually use them on the grade 3 turn. Um, so like you can save your cannonballs in your order zone for like the subsequent turns um, and then you only ever really need like the grade one to ride into the new Michu to get your whole board set up right so you get like your knock nose this revives itself it's like pretty easy yeah so there's just like a lot of um, consistency with this deck I feel that this deck is um, consistent enough to do what it needs to do which is push aggression in the early game, get to three to four damage, go for like a kill turn on turn four. Um, and then if you don't kill them, you cripple them to the point that they can't recover and you've got like three or four PGs in hand and you just go through and win. Um, and then on turn five, you just absolutely blow them out of the water and they literally can't do anything, right? So um, when I played Doji in testing, I felt that Doji, all of the games that I played was just nice, right? There were never any blowout wins. I didn't feel like there were any blowout wins. Um, some of my wins were just too close and I didn't want that, right? I either wanted to get obliterated or obliterate my opponent and that, that's just how it is, right? I don't want the stresses during a tournament to say, oh, you know, I just won and then that kind of doubts my confidence, right? So I decided to bring this and, you know, it served me well. Um, I think I went X1 only losing to Masai, and I think that was actually a misplay. Um, I probably should have stayed down a turn um, on grade two, aggro them again, um, make them ride up to grade three, and then push for four attacks because my opponent would be on grade three then. Uh, but I decided to ride up thinking that Persona Ride will win me the game, but I completely forgot that Masai actually draws a bunch, right? So, lessons learned, you know. Um, and then in top eight, our uh, top 16 played Leonorn, top eight played Blang Meyer, uh, top four, I played Doji. Um, that one was, I, I lost that one. In hindsight, if I just normally guarded everything, I would have been okay. But that's in hindsight, uh, I played it so that my uh, top card was a defensive. I had, think, 
I had like six or seven triggers um, in deck and missed a blank, which is unfortunate. If I had a trigger, I probably would have won. Um, so it was a really close match. Uh, it was to the champion of the event. So, you know, can't ask for more. Um, and then I played against Shirunui and the deck I think gave up at that point. So yeah, unfortunate, but you know, had a really good run with this deck. And I felt that this is a really, really good pick if people just want a deck that does what it does and doesn't really care about what the opponent does um, because this just absolutely slams like all stride decks um, it, it just puts so much pressure right a lot of these decks have to take like one or two turns to stabilize and this deck just makes sure that your opponent doesn't get the time to stabilize um, and I think that's what made this deck so successful for this event right so I guess talking about day one as well uh, day one I brought Kachina uh, it's the same deck that I've been playing for like the last season uh i think it's like one card different from the sydney list that i played uh the list is on twitter uh i'll i think i linked um i have a video on my channel regarding katrina but yeah you guys can watch that in your own time but the reason why i brought katrina to the event was because in vietnam there's a lot of rogue decks and i was anticipating rogue decks and i did literally all seven rounds were all different decks um, meta decks, rogue decks, you know, tier one, tier two, tier one and a half decks. There's just a bunch of them. Uh, then played against Shirunui in the top eight, played against Victor in top four, and then versus Dane in the finals with Gridora. And obviously that's an auto last matchup for Katrina, but you know, got my world's invite, so that's all good. So before we end this video, just wanted to give a shout out to a bunch of people. So first shout out goes to Taunt, my friend in Korea. Uh, one of Korea's best, if not the best, Korean player uh, for Vanguard. He pretty much bashed myself and Anson during Spring Fest. Um, and we were like so eye opened about this deck. We were like, holy crap, this deck is insane. Uh, it went undefeated and only lost to one random deck uh, because we trigger sacked out of existence. And it made me believe that this deck actually had a lot of potential. Been playing it for about a month. Um, been talking to him about you know deck strategies um, how to approach certain matchups um, and I saw like a list which was this list uh, that went undefeated in WGP I think it was Kyoto or wherever it was um, on the Japan side and I was like yeah you know th th this is it this is the deck right uh, so I've been keeping this under wraps for a while um, so you know decided to play it and it gave me you know a lot of success then big shout out to Joshua Lee. He was my travel buddy for the event. Um, had the best time with him, ate a lot, traveled a lot. Um, had a lot of laughs with Min Hugh as well. Um, big shout out also to the community in Vietnam. Um, obviously there were like international players as well. Um, you know, really appreciate always everyone who comes up and talks to me. Uh, whether it's just about, you know, Vanguard, about life, about whatever it is, really appreciate you guys, really appreciate the support. Um, and I know some of the players even came up to me and said, you know, I watch your videos every week when you release it, really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for your support. And, you know, I will try to always, you know, play my best and, you know, show you results with, you know, these uh, weirder decks because, you know, everyone knows about Shudu Doji, everyone knows about Leonon, but no one knows about Mewtwo, but here we are, you know. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, well, I guess last shout out to Toby as well. He gave me a quick rundown of Shirunui uh, the night before. And, you know, it got me the dub in top eight, got me my world invite. So, you know, he deserves a bit of credit for that testing as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. It's just a recap of my event and the deck profile that I brought for Michu. Um, hope you guys give this a go. It's a really good deck in set four. I'm not too sure how this will translate in set 5 because there's a lot of like, you know, um, aggressive decks in that meta. But, you know, it's still a deck to, for you guys to try. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Give it a try. Give it a go. And, you know, let me know your thoughts, right? If you guys like this video, pop a like, comment down below what you guys think of everything that I've explained in this video. If you guys haven't already, click that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.